Our key ideas for this problem will be, number one, our gravitational potential energy, as it falls, will convert to kinetic energy. Then the kinetic energy of the system is the sum of the kinetic energies of all the objects that make up the system. So we're going to break it down into two pieces, the hoop and the rod. We'll add their kinetic energies together to get our total kinetic energy. And then our total kinetic energy is equal to one-half I omega squared. We'll figure out what is the moment of inertia of this hoop rod system, and then we'll solve that for omega to answer the question, what is the angular speed at the bottom of the swing? This is not exactly the same, but you get the idea with this tennis racket rotating to the bottom of its swing. So first of all, gravitational potential energy we know is mass times gravity times height. So the question is, here's this hoop. Number one, how do I measure its height? What part of the, ring, the hoop do I use? Do I use the top of the hoop, the middle of the hoop, the bottom of the hoop? Which part do I use? And what do I measure the height with respect to? So it's a good idea to choose the lowest point as the reference, or h equals zero. And here you can see I have chosen the lowest point to be h equals zero. And also you notice I have chosen the center of the ring to be the place where I measure distance from. Why the center? Because that's the center of mass. Remember, the center of mass is the point at which you can pretend all the mass is located. So the hoop's mass can be thought of as all located here at the top and all located here at the bottom. So now that difference in height that the hoop falls is r plus 2r plus 2r plus 2 plus r, or 6r would be the height that the hoop is at the top compared to the bottom. Okay, so... That's what I do. I plug in here for H 6 R and I know R is 15 centimeters or 0.15 meters. So that gives me a number of 0.9. And for now, I'm going to leave this M and G alone. Oftentimes you can deal with those at the very end and it just makes it a little simpler. So I'll do that. Now the rod, its center of mass is right here at, at the top of the swing and its center of mass is right here at the bottom of the swing. So that is r plus r, or a height of 2r. So there is my height, 2 times r, 0.15. And so the potential energy of the rod then is 0.3 mg. So my total potential energy then is the sum of those two, 1.2 mg. And that's the potential energy up here. As it falls, that all converts to kinetic energy down here. The kinetic energy is the sum of the kinetic energies which is one half I omega squared for each object. So here it is for the hoop, and here it is for the rod. I know they both have the same omega because they are swinging as one object. So the omega over here is the same as the omega over here. So that is the same variable. Here's my axis of rotation. Neither the rod nor the hoop is rotating about its center of mass. It's rotating about this axis of rotation. So I'm going to have to use the parallel axis theorem. For the hoop, my value of h in the parallel axis theorem will be 3r. And then the rod, here's its center of mass. Here's the axis of rotation. So that's an h value of just r. So here's the parallel axis theorem. ICOM plus mh squared. We decided for the hoop, h is 3r. And we decided for the rod, it's just r. The ICOM values, for the hoop, you have to be careful. Because in table 10-2, you see there are two entries for a hoop. One of them is a hoop about a central axis, which this one is not. So that's what you see here, 1 half mr squared for a hoop about any diameter. And then ICOM for a rod is 1 12th ml squared. And we see the length of the rod, L, is 2R. So there are my expressions using the parallel axis theorem for the moment of inertia for the hoop and the rod. I'm going to divide M out of the equation, plug in my value for R, and solve. And I see that my value for the angular velocity of the rod and the hoop as it swings through the bottom is 9.82 radians per second.